Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to look at the game Ivan Sokolov against uh, Thunderfield. So it was a Nimzo Indian. And once again, we will not get into the repertoire position uh, straight away, but by a queen c2 uh, move order, which will again highlight that you know many times if black is not playing in the ideal way, then we can get a much improved uh, version of a normal queen c2 nimzo, so avoiding many critical lines. So Sokolov played queen c2, short castle, a3, bishop takes c3, queen takes on c3, d6, this is still completely normal, he played Bishop g5. And now in the game it was queen e7 played, which is a very rare and I would say slightly slightly dubious move. I mean, it is playable, but there are simply better ways to play. For example, knight d7 is the, is the main line where white plays e3, b6. For example, bishop d3 and bishop b7. So this is very common position in the in the Nimzo Indian, which is possible via the queen c2 move order. But now I will show you how we could get this position that we play queen b3 right away. So if uh, black wants to play with this queen e7 way, then now it's the, I would say, even much more logical move than in this position because, okay, now queen e7 is really not protecting anything, it just tries to prepare e5. So here it protects the bishop, white plays a3, takes, now the queen takes from b3, short castle, bishop g5, d6. So this is how we get the position, and you can see that uh, with this move order, black did not have the chance to get into this b6, bishop b7 uh, variations. All right, so bishop g5, queen e7. Sokolov played e3. Obviously, that's the normal developing move, the idea of playing bishop d3 and then most likely following it up with knight e2, since eventually building a center with f3, e4 could be uh, very nice. But of course, black plays e5. And in this position, white has to. Uh, good ways to, to counter this idea, and there is one uh, one incorrect. So obviously the incorrect move is d5. So why it is incorrect? Because we just played e3 in the previous move, and I mean in such structure we would really like to have this pawn on e4. And you know, support e5, maybe build with f3, the center, and so on. Here the pawns are a little bit um, isolated from each other and black can immediately take advantage by playing h6. White obviously go, goes bishop h4 and then c6. So it just highlights the problem that we don't have simply enough uh, resources to protect on, uh, on d5 comfortably. So if we go e4, like losing a tempo, then black just plays g5 and in the next move we get knight takes e4 with a with the lost position, so that's not good, obviously. And if white would just protect the pawn with a move like rook d1, then again g5 is quite good. After bishop g3, cd, cd, and bishop f5, for example, is a very nice position for black. Uh, white's king side is undeveloped. So we are very far from castling. This bishop is uh, very, very well restricted by uh, these two pawns. And black has ideas like rook c8 immediately using the the c file or just bringing the knight out and I mean, knight e4 as well. So this is just a great position for black. And if he would try some some h4, you know, to open the the king side at the worst case, black has g4 completely closing it. So it's really a bad position for for white. So d5 is bad. The uh, alternative to the game continuation would be bishop d3. But I would say it's, it's really good to play this bishop d3 when the knight 
So then we can meet e5 with knight e2 already. That's quite comfortable. Either the knight taking back on d4, or even the pawn sometimes uh, keeping the space advantage in the center. Normally, that's the ideal way. So, you know, for example, black plays like a5, and then we play knight e2. This I quite like in this sense. But uh, in this current move order, maybe h6 is interesting for black. And in case of bishop h4, there is e takes d4. So obviously now e pawn is not taking back, and the knight is not taking back either. So the queen must take, and then there is again this typical uh, Nimzo type of play, g5, then gaining a tempo on the queen, and playing something like knight h5, and the position is... I mean, it's quite interesting, but black also has, you know, some, some clear play pushing the f pawn forward, maybe playing knight e5 at some moment. Quite double-edged, I would say. So what is very common and usually good uh, against the d6 e5 ideas is to take on e5. So this way, you know, white is behind in the development. This way, white is gaining some time. Since, of course, black has to take back and then white can develop with the center. Uh, being more calm, so to say, so there is not this pressure of ed4 or maybe e4 at some moment. So yeah, this is just a typical reaction, d takes uh, on e5. So now, of course, the structure is uh, symmetrical in a way, but white has the pair of bishops, which is a, which is a long-term advantage. So bishop d3 was played. Now knight d7. Obviously, black brings the knight to d7 because if he would bring it to c6, it would just, uh, you know, the knight is completely restricted. So the knight is going towards uh, c5, or if the rook moves them maybe to f8, those are better squares. So knight bt7, and white goes knight e2, also quite typical. Exactly the similar thing as it would uh, be for black if he played knight f3, this pawn is. Uh, well restricting the the knight and of course in, in this particular case e4 would be pretty unpleasant so knight e2 black played knight c5 i believe this move may maybe a slight inaccuracy for black probably it was better to just continue developing like b6 short castle bishop b7 Rook d1, rook e8, bishop c2, for example. White can play f3 next, maybe knight g3. b4 is an idea. And with the pair of bishops, it's definitely a, an advantage for white, but black is also pretty solid. Instead, uh, black went knight c5. Of course, they want to take the bishop. So white is not allowing that. Bishop c2, and now rook e8. The point of this move is that it's protecting the queen on e7, which means completely irrelevant since there is a pin on the knight. So why the queen needs protection? I mean, this is a typical trick in the queen c2 nimzo. So if uh, white would castle here, that's a serious mistake. Uh, fortunately, it's not going to be a worse position for white, but uh, losing all the advantage. Black plays knight c to e4. Sometimes the other knight also works right away, like knight f to e4, but in this particular case, bishop e7, knight c3, takes here, takes here with the check even, but after king h1, this knight is very likely to, to be lost in the next couple of moves. So therefore, knight c4 is correct. So white must take on e4 now. Bishop f6 would be really bad because uh, black is taking uh, one more piece in this variation. So knight c3, bishop e7, knight e2 with a check, and now the bishop is on e7. So it is captured. So white must take on e4, knight e4. And here you can see why it was important to protect the queen on e7. Because after bishop e7, knight takes e3, again this knight e2 is coming with a check, so 
white must take on c3 and after rook e7 black, uh, black is completely equal we'll play bishop e6 next completely equal endgame so that's a trick uh, white should not uh, blunder so sokolov played knight g3 very strong move covering e4 square so knight e4 is definitely not a move at this situation and black played a5 it makes sense so the other idea would be h6 using the fact that the bishop actually cannot retreat to h4 because the g5 is trapping it but in such case white can just take queen takes on f6 and now just play b4 gain a lot of space in the queen side and for example the knight goes to e6 and white can just castle with a very nice position black has issues with the development i mean the knight is developed but it's not well placed also e5 pawn can be a little bit uh, problematic like after moves like knight e4 for example and yeah c5 can happen rook fd1 in general just uh, clear advantage for for white here so by this you can understand the move of black so he played a5 with the idea of making this b4 much more difficult for for white and also introducing the positional threat of, of playing a4 so once uh, black is playing a4 making b4 is basically impossible since it will be always met by a takes on b3 and the knight on c5 will be just very stable so basically like the automatic positional move would be b3 in this position that later there will be the chance to go b4 and also a4 is not a move because yeah, we just push uh, b4 now but in this case black could play h6 and you know the lines i showed uh, before i greatly improved for black because instead of the pawn being on b4 it is just on b3 and and the position is quite okay for black actually like short castle bishop e6 you can see the difference i mean here black is uh, kind of finishing uh, the development so sokolov uh, did a much better thing than this b3 he castled right away h6 is not a question now once again because it's possible to take and push uh, uh, b4 so black played a4 i mean that was the idea that if not h6 then just fix the queen side and then maybe play b6 or just develop this bishop or play h6 next i mean probably h6 next is actually the the real threat here and again a typical thing like which uh, can happen in this structure especially when the speed is uh, there with the queen and the knight on f6 that we need uh, some access to the to the f6 knight and the way to do so is to play f4 open the rook on f1 to attack on f6 and basically black is forced to take on f4 there is no uh, real alternative if e4 is extremely bad because it allows knight h5 and there is no knight e4 tricks anymore because there is a pawn f6 is under big uh, pressure and if knight e7 rook, e, rook a d1 more pressure on d7 some sacrifices already e4 pawn can be in trouble so yeah this is just uh, really bad so yeah normally it's e takes f4 what should be the reaction uh, black included h6 which cannot be too bad i mean opening the the back rank so now bishop h4 is possible since g5 is not there now black took e takes and queen e3 again like rook a to e1 is coming knight h5 is coming the queen is in a pin so it is uh, very logical to to make this move queen e3 queen takes and rook takes e3 so now the position has greatly simplified and what is black's only problem is the development of these two pieces 
if this bishop would be out and probably only that that one move is needed for black to be quite okay in this position but it's white uh, to move so white has to use this uh, time to create something he took on f6 i mean there is no pin anymore and the knight is even threatening to to go away so it's a good time to to take f6 and create a weakness on f6 winning black's uh, pawn structure on the king side and it's already good to note at this moment that playing a move like knight h5 is super unpleasant because there is no clear way to to protect this pawn besides pushing it to a light square when it can be attacked more easily but okay first rook a d1 it's a very good move threatening to to play rook d8 and just pin black on the on the queen side so black doesn't really have a choice at this moment he has to develop the bishop and there are not too many alternatives so the ideal square i would be to to put it is was e6 but unfortunately this rook's placement on e3 is not good so after king f2 the rook is trapped on e3 and white is just winning the game so that's immediately can be eliminated and bishop d7 is another square but yeah i mean it just looks you know very loose only the knight protecting and now white can just play knight h5 and what i showed as protection f5 is not working because knight f6 check is winning the bishop and in case the rook goes back there is bishop f5 once again just winning a lot of material because of the rook d6 we trade and knight f6 is winning the bishop so um basically it leaves uh, black with one option bishop g4 but it looks quite good it attacks h5 and it covers sorry it attacks d1 and covers h5 so it's both a tempo and the defensive move which is quite nice but white can answer with a uh, with an attacking move uh, himself rook d5 attacking uh, the knight b6 and what else and then uh, now king f2 was played so again very precise move from white so what was black's uh, trick here because there was one issue with this bishop on g4 that it can be easily you know trapped in a way by f5 so there is no way back and it seems like there is no way forward either but actually there is so there is bishop e2 it looks not completely bad but after rook e1 black has this uh, trick of bishop c4 so both of white's uh, rooks are hanging and whatever we do it's just uh, pawn up for black so therefore king f2 was played first attacking the rook and yeah i mean probably the decisive mistake okay maybe not decisive mistake but like definitely a bad move was played in this position but yeah it's quite logical uh, black played rook a to e8 but in the whole game there were problems with this rook on e3 so it would have been just better to retreat it to to e8 and then at least okay black doesn't have to worry about this rook and the point is that after f5 which uh, looks uh, quite crushing for white with the idea of h3 black has this defense of playing h5 with the idea of h4 obviously it's very easy to prevent like h4 but then we are never trapping the bishop and in case uh, white goes h3 h4 takes takes king g3 rook e2 black is down a pawn but the knight on c5 is extremely strong double pawns are quite good in the defense on the on the king side so black has all the chances to to make a draw uh, in this line so according to my analysis it's better not to go for this line straight away but for example play a move like rook e1 and let's say after the trade you know this bishop can be still in trouble the king can go to c3 and white can attack uh, black's multiple weaknesses either on the queen or king side so yeah this is still quite tough for black but it's not not lost by any means 
So on king f2, rook e8, rook a to e8 was played. Of course, black had his idea, so once again, f5 can be met by h5. And it's even pretty great for black because h4 is coming with, uh, with ideas of uh, rook e2. So that's not what Sokolov did, but he played a really great move at this at this position. And you know, materially, it's a little bit net minus, so to say. But if you, if you look at the position, it's a, it's a really good decision. So he took Black's uh, best piece, the c5 knight. By that, he's making a bad structure. And this bishop, which was like completely dominated by the knight, now joins the game with the tempo. Bishop takes a4, and white also has a potential uh, pass pawn for the, for the end games. Of course, it would be all not enough, at least for not for an advantage, but the main thing which uh, even leads to white's advantage is the placement of this rook because okay now this is under attack and it has to protect the other one so that's the that's the main problem for uh, for black here so suddenly not only e3 rook but the i also, also should highlight the g4 bishop which can be very easily trapped or targeted so black's coordination is really uh, poor and now rook uh, Eight to e6 was played, which which is really like already I believe losing mistake. So this idea of rook e2 wouldn't help um, because white can just take, and even though black takes with the checking uh, g3 is a tempo, and then rook f2 will protect the the queen side, and even if white somehow uh, sorry even if black somehow manages to take c4, it will be a much better endgame for white with the outside pass ball. So rook e2 is not enough. The best defense according to the computer is c6. So the point is quite easily understandable, uh, especially if I already said the game continuation was rook e6. So the point is that if white takes, then rook e6 is actually coming with the tempo, attacking the bishop. I mean, of course, it has to be, <coughs> sorry, combined with the rook move, let's say to b3, and then, uh, then the bishop on c6 is hanging. And yeah, here actually there is not uh, no clear way for, for white to have an advantage. For example, if, uh, if f5, uh, I believe this is the best ride, and rook e5 is played h3, bishop f5, knight f5, rook f5, king e3, rook f1. So this is how uh, black gets out of uh, this many loose pieces. But to be honest, after b4, it is still extremely difficult to, to make a draw in this position. There is only one way, actually. Uh, and yeah, that's not trivial. So I guess cb4 would be a human move. Rook a1 would be a human move for bringing the king. But according to the engine, this check on e1 is extremely important for some reason. And, uh, you know, that's that's the only way to make the draw here. There's some, some long lines, but uh, anyway, so this f5 was, was not enough. And if white plays something like bishop d7, Trying to use this uh, hanging position of the g4 bishop, then there is rook e2 checked. And here, unfortunately, white cannot take this because after rook e2, the king cannot keep attacking the rook, and yeah, otherwise, we lose the bishop. So, king g1, rook b2, bishop e6, bishop e6, and after, let's say, rook c1, f5. Our pawns are quite weak, and uh, you know the knight is also very poorly pay placed. So black is 
very big favorite to to draw this so on c6 it's better not to take but rather to play h3 so now the bishop has to move back again not a huge choice bishop d7 and now rook d1 So basically, this uh, this could have been the, the best line after this rook takes e5 sacrifice, and you can see that white pieces are getting very good, and black is going back to to passive. So now the rook has to go back to to protect the bishop, and now white plays knight h5. So it was a really nice concept from from Sokolov. Black's pawns are awful, and he's just attacking everywhere. With, uh, with excellent chances to, to win this game. So on bishop a4, the c6 would have been better. Rook e6 was played. And now after h3, uh, basically the game is over. Uh, so bishop e2 was played. According to the engine, rook e2 is better. But once again, it's the same situation that we just take. King g3 is a tempo and rook f2 can be played next. So. I don't think it's. Uh, it was also a very serious chance for Black to save the game. Not after Bishop e2, f5, Rook e5, and now Rook e1. Basically, uh, transposing into a, a Bishop end game by force because now the Bishop is hanging, so it has to. Black has to sacrifice uh, the Rook one g3, King g3, Bishop c4. Now, of course, we trade Fe, and just because of this a3 pawn, this bishop endgame is quite easily winning, but it is still quite nice how Sokolov converted, so like first uh, move is, I would say, quite natural, so opp opponent has light squared bishop, we can put our pawns on dark squares and even limit very seriously the king so it cannot come via g7 and if it wants to come via f8 e7 also not possible and the bishop cuts e8 so it's f6 puts uh, the king into cage so now bishop d5 bishop d7 freeing the way for the pawn and the other point is that if the king wants to get out of the cage via h7, then there is check on f5, and it's not getting out. So that, therefore, uh, black plays bishop e4, preparing uh, this idea of bringing out the king like this. And once again, I mean, a4, surely, I guess it's winning. But you simply don't need to, to calculate, okay, a4, king is coming out, a5, maybe takes the pawn. Who knows, maybe some miracle happens. So Sokolov played h4. Again, the pawn is a dark, on a dark square, and the point is that if king comes to h7, all the pawn cages the king. And I mean, without the king, this pawn will surely very easily uh, promote. So h4, h5. Again, this is the the plan. Now king f2. Still, the a pawn is not going. Black has some counterplay, maybe. King h7 and king e3. The g2 pawn absolutely doesn't matter because okay, even if black takes it, you know there is no pawn to push there. And the main uh, point is that the king cannot come out. So bishop took on g2. Now bishop f5, very nice. So the king is completely caged. This diagonal is not possible. This square is not possible. And if it makes to f8, then the bishop uh, retreats to d7. So it's, uh, really nice uh, from Sokolov. And king went to h6. And only now, when the king cannot move anymore for, from black, also the pawns are not going anywhere. Now he played a4. Black played bishop b7, and after a5. Uh, black resigns since there are no moves, even simplifying to a to a pawn and game always wins. So, or rather, actually, the bishop at this moment has to make a decision. You know that if it leaves uh, the long diagonal, then the king enters, 
and if it stays uh, on the long diagonal, then the pawn moves till a7, and then the bishop is traded with a with an immediate win. So there is there is not much to do uh, for black. So a quite straightforward game overall. Very well played from white, and not many mistakes from black, to be honest. This uh, very natural looking move of rook e8 was maybe the only move which can be you know criticized as a mistake, but yeah, overall rather white played really good. So I hope you like this game and uh, see you soon in another uh, video.